What's going on everybody? Read of the Wave here. I hope you're all having a wonderful evening or morning or whenever you see this video. Um, I'm recording with my new phone. I hope the quality is a lot better than the phone I was using for earlier videos and I hope you guys can hear me perfectly fine. Uh, hope my hair and my poofiness doesn't uh, make you think, wow, he must have just got out of bed. Because it's kind of true. But, <laughs> um, I don't really have much of a topic, really, in all honesty, to talk to you guys about. Um, just a nerd, kind of a nerdy thing that just popped in my head. <clears throat> because, uh, I just got done watching some Dragon Ball Super and, and everything like that. And, I was, and then I watched a DC movie, and then I watched a Marvel movie, and I was just kind of bored. Um... How do I put this? Uh, well, before I get into the topic, I just want to let you guys know that in about a week, my uh, girlfriend is coming down for two weeks. Um, I might make a vlog video and she might be on camera for like five seconds because she's really camera shy. But, um, and then in April, I am moving to Idaho um, to go live with her and her family for a bit. And uh, we're going to see how that goes. So... Um, so I'm just giving you a little update that way, uh, whenever I do, um, whenever I do eventually, uh, end up there, you're not asking too many questions about where I'm at. Okay, so the topic that I want to talk about is, you know, you know, versus, basically superheroes versus anime heroes versus whatever. Um, there's a large misconception that people don't understand about when you take a hero from one universe and another person and another hero from another universe and then try to pin them up together, um, in a fight, kind of like what Death Battle does here on YouTube, you know, and the thing that, uh, I find funny is so many people take sides, um, uh, you know, and then get into these heated debates about who would win and who would lose and all that wonderful stuff. Also, if the camera's shaking, it's in my arm. My arm's kind of tired. But uh, I might have to switch arms here in a minute. Uh, one of the biggest fights on YouTube is Goku versus Superman. And, and I'm just going to let you know right now. Uh, in my opinion, I really don't think it, either one of them would win. I think it would come down to a draw in all honesty, um, because, um, I don't know, it just, I, I've looked at both characters, and when, before I even knew what Dragon Ball Z was, I used to watch DC stuff all the time, I used to love Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, all the Justice League, and then when I found out about Goku and everything, and these powerful planet-killing, you know, Ki Blasters, or Kai Blasters, whatever you want to call them, um, uh, I was always like, okay, you know, this is cool, and I would get into the show, and I would just sit there and be entertained with all the flashing lights and cool hair transformations. Well, over the years, I started to see how Superman slowly became more and more mortalized. And what I mean by that is, is if you look back in the early comics when Superman first started coming out, the feats he pulled off um, and the way the writers had made him made him invincible he there was no way to defeat superman uh kryptonite had, didn't even come out yet like kryptonite wasn't there to defeat him like wasn't there to be his weakness over time i'm guessing the writers decided that there had to be some kind of change because it, it was kind of boring to watch someone constantly win like the good guy constantly there had to be some kind of confrontation and battle that the hero had to go through where so superman went from being able to pull solar systems on his back to being able to still do amazing feats but he finally had a weakness which was kryptonite well also uh, superman is also weak to magic uh there's plenty of anime people who use magic maybe not to such a degree that they could defeat goku but there might be some like there's a large variety of anime like just like there's a large variety of dc and marvel heroes 
Um, but then after a while, you know, they continued to scale Superman down. Uh, to the point where, yeah, they give him new abilities, like, you know, he can do some kind of supernova attack. I, I don't really care too much for Superman as much as I used to. Um, basically, uh, they made it to the point where even a villain actually killed Superman. Yes, he came back. I know he came back, but killed him in a battle. That's the main thing that people care about, uh, is who would defeat who in a death battle that's what the whole point is so my point is superman has been killed and i'm pretty sure it's more than once i know that has been shown in the movies multiple times for him being killed um and uh the the way i look at it is because he's been mortalized more and more and more Throughout the ages since his creation, Superman has been more and more defeatable. Not saying that it's an easy feat that, you know, any anime character or any Marvel or DC character could do with a flick of their finger. But I do believe it is possible if you, you know, trained yourself enough from any of the other universes or found a character that is powerful enough to take him down. Uh... Now, the, when I now in Goku's defense, Goku started off as a, and this is the way I look at it. If you think about it, Superman and Goku are not all that different when it comes to their story. Their planet was destroyed. They got sent in a spaceship, landed on Earth, found by a human, and raised on Earth. Uh, both aliens, both really incredibly strong, but Goku started off without the strength benefit that Superman had. Um. Goku started off with immense ability and talent and a tail, which eventually got cut off. But if you look at the gap of power he's achieved within his life, uh, and yes, he's been killed probably more times than Superman has, but you got to think at the level of power he's at now in Dragon Ball Super, he rivals the gods, and eventually, I know for a fact from, a, from the Saiyan nature inside of him, he's going to eventually surpass the gods. Um, basically, I believe that Goku is one of those guys that continues to break limits that people set before him. Um, he, and it's not, he doesn't just have physical attacks. He has energy attacks that I know for a fact would be a lot more devastating now than when he fought Vegeta for the first time. Yeah, his Kamehameha was powerful back then, especially with Kaioken on top of it, but now he could destroy planets with just one beam if he aimed it right. And I don't really have too many of the facts like the actual comics or the manga or for Goku or Superman, but when it comes down to it, because of how much Superman has been mortalized through the years and Goku has been deified through, you know, through most of this time, I believe it would come out more even than people would like to admit. Uh, there's a lot of Superman fans out there. So there's a lot of Goku fans. In my personal opinion, I am more of a Goku fan than I am a Superman fan. I don't really care for Superman. I feel like he has been the staple boy for all superheroes for longer than he should. Um, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. I am just feel like there needs to be a new generation of superheroes that honestly have their own you know, their own goals, their own stories, rather than telling the same thing about Superman all the time. Whereas Goku has had multiple adventures, different bad guys to take down, kind of like Superman, but to a much more fascinating and interesting degree. Uh, basically, if you look at Marvel and you look at DC, Darkseid is just like Thanos and, you know, Superman facing someone like the Joker, which the Joker has bested Superman before in video games and in... TV shows, you know, maybe not killed him, but the fact that Superman is this mighty person who can be tricked by a human, uh, kind of just makes me not really respect him as much as I, you know, probably used to. Um, but going to, and Goku's just plain stupid. You know, Goku has, uh, the personality of a battle loving child, which I think is funny at times and annoying at times because it does become his undoing at times. Hold on, I'm going to scratch my arm here for a second. <clears throat> okay. 
so when it comes down to, um, when it really comes down to the battle between them, I really believe that it would be a draw. And if one won, it would not be by a large margin. It would be by the skin of their teeth. They would legitimately have brought each other to their limits. Because even though people argue that Superman has no limits, he has been shown many times to have limits. Uh, the some people like to prefer the older Superman as the as the real Superman. Well, the thing is though, I look at Superman from a more modern standpoint. Where is Superman now? Not where he used to be, not how he used to be, but where the writers of any type of comic or movie has him now. Um, because you can't keep looking to the past. I'm sorry, you can't do that. You if you're gonna have two people fight in a death battle. You have to look at their more modern place in the world, uh, of, of our world, and of their own. Superman has ha has only gained a you know a small amount of abilities. You know he's always had the heat vision for mo for most of his life. He's had the cold breath, the super sp the super fast flying speed, the flight, the strength. You know, and that's about it and then yeah he got this new supernova move which compared to some of the feats that dragon ball z has done with energy attacks is nothing i believe even frieza's supernova attack that he used to destroy planets would possibly outdo the supernova because they've been shown that all the supernova ability can do is drain superman of all of his energy and only destroy a small section of the planet Whereas Freeze's ability can destroy the entire planet if if you wanted to. I, in fact, actually, uh, it's also a proven fact that you know when Vegeta and Goku first fought, and Vegeta was gonna fire his uh, uh, Gatlet gun, that that power, that one minuscule attack at the power level Vegeta was at compared to where he is now, would have been enough to destroy the planet if Goku had not matched it and then beat it. The, and if you look also at a lot of Dragon Ball Z characters, there's a reason Goku always, almost all the time, fire, fires his attack at an angle away from the planet's surface, or at least where it's not going to finish up on the Earth. There's a reason when they have power collisions, they're not aiming down. It's, it's mainly because of the fact that they could destroy the planet with one of their simplest attacks or even their most powerful attack. So even even Superman's most powerful energy attack, which is the supernova uh, ability that he has, it, it's I don't know how much power he needs to pour into it, but if he pours all of his power to have his stamina drained to the point where he's as weak as a human, because that's what I read about it, uh, is that that's how basically, you know, how strong that ability is is it wipes all of his energy but if that if if something the size of a nuclear bomb is and that's all it is that's all the power it is is basically a superman super uh superman nuclear bomb compared to some of the stuff that some of these people in dragon ball z can do i don't think uh superman when it comes to just his energy based attacks would win in any type of situation now, when it comes down to Superman's physical strength, I, I know for a fact that he's not supposed to have limits, but even in the modern version, it shows, um, you know, him struggling with things. And and I've, I've seen tons of videos explaining this about how he has a mental block and, and other things like that. But it's been shown so many times in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super, even if you have a mental block, it can be broken and you can, you know push yourself to to get past a mental block because it's not hard to assess a situation based on the severeness of of the situation if a if a small building is collapsing you don't need the strength to stop a meteor to to hold up the building or stop it from coming down in time for people to get out you don't need the strength to stop a meteor to stop a plane but you should never go and approach a meteor with the strength trying to hold up a building or stop a bus you should put your whole strength into it, it, it there i don't see any reason a mental block should ever 
displace common sense with someone as to be as someone as powerful as Superman. He should be able to, regardless of the of whatever mental cap uh, block is there, to see a common situation and you know be able to discern how much strength he wants to put into whatever task he's doing. Whereas Goku should also show some restraint because there have been times where he goes all out. Now I've heard people say that he doesn't, that he goes out all out on the beginning. Well, if we look in the new Dragon Ball Super when he's fighting Jaren, he's not, when he first fought Jaren, he didn't go straight to Super Saiyan Blue. He tested to see how strong Jaren was. And he actually used a strategic mind. Now he hasn't done that all the time. But at the same time, he knew how strong some of his opponents were. That's the reason when he fought, you know, Boo, uh, Majin Boo, he was he was in Super Saiyan 3 for a reason. And he went straight to Super Saiyan 3 for that reason, because he knew Majin Boo was strong. He knew Jaren was strong, but he didn't know how strong. He had already heard so many legends about Majin Boo. So that's the reason he went straight to Super Saiyan 3, because he knew he had to go full power for this. So my, my point is, and the whole reason I've been rambling, is because I believe it would come down to a draw, or if one of them won, it would be by the skin of their teeth. Now, in my most definite, um, my most definite answer, who I think would win, believe it or not, would be Superman. Not because I believe he's stronger than Goku, or faster, or anything like that. When it comes down to stamina, I know for a fact that Superman can withhold his stamina for a long time. And trust me, it pains me to say this because I don't like Superman. I don't like all these fans that have hard-ons for Superman that are just like, Superman's the best. He's the only thing that can do. He's the only person who can do anything. Like, no. Uh, Goku has a lot of stamina than when, uh, a lot more stamina than when you first see him in Dragon Ball Z, but... At the same time, Goku has been shown at the most crucial moments to lose his transformation with a good hit. Someone smacks him in the gut long enough, he loses all focus and can't keep up his transformation. He gets hit in the face hard enough, sometimes it goes. Sometimes he's getting ready to do a really awesome attack that would probably be a finisher, and he loses his transformation, which which had increased that attack. And you know, and he and sometimes he loses track of his stamina. And I feel like that would be another uh, fault of his not saying he wouldn't give Superman a run of their money so if I had to depict a winner it would be Superman but by the skin of his teeth if he wasn't going to die he would be on the verge of death there would be no oh he smacked Goku around no problem he wasn't fighting Goku to the full of his ability that's bullcrap Superman may be powerful but over the years and the more modernized Superman is a legitimate more easy to beat person than when he first was in comics if he was, if it was him at first in comics, then he would be able to easily, easily defeat Goku, because Goku can never pull off the strength feats at even in a god level the way he does now, or the way the way Superman was. Sorry, but uh, before I uh, talk any more about just Goku and Superman, uh, I believe that a lot of people, because they're not anime fans, tend to say that there isn't a single anime character with just pure strength ability that could defeat Superman on a, in a strength battle. I say that's bullcrap. I have been watching uh, a series, you know, year, a year ago called One Punch Man. I, if you don't know who that is, uh, his name is Saitama. He's a normal human, just a regular human who, for some reason doing the ba the most basic workout that anyone could do and surviving the most basic stuff that anyone could survive somehow obtained the most immense strength in three years to the point where he lost all of his hair through this training and he became so powerful that he legitimately has punched meteors barely with any effort and they're destroyed he has defeated monsters in one punch that's the whole reason he's called one punch man the only people that have ever been able to survive more than one punch from him is are people who legitimately have the ability to regenerate at such a fast rate. Um, in my opinion, Saitama, which is his actual name, One Punch Man is just the name of the anime, uh, could easily wipe the floor with Superman. And if not, he could maybe survive 
10 punches from One Punch Man before finally giving out from exhaustion or damage. Because the whole premise of One Punch Man right now is the fact that he's no one can beat him because he can defeat enemies in one punch. That's the premise of it. Whereas the past premise of Superman was that no one could defeat him. He didn't have any weaknesses. That's not what it is anymore. He is the stable boy of superheroes of the DC world, but the more modernized Superman has been mortalized to such a point that people like Saitama in anime, who do not have any weaknesses for that matter, he may take damage, but it's so minuscule because of how strong he actually is. You know, he could he could wipe the floor with Superman in a heartbeat. There have been aliens that could destroy planets like Darkseid and stuff like that that have come like there's one in the very end of the of the anime, spoilers if you haven't seen it, that legitimately because the whole point of one punch man is they're making fun of their anime well there's a character that you could see legitimately coming straight out of dragon ball z who kicked the living crap out of of saitama and his kicks and punches caused such powerful shock waves that it was destroying his own ship and causing the clouds to part and all that stuff and um saitama just brushed it off he kicked Saitama so hard that he flew up into the moon, okay? And sorry if I keep looking down, I'm, I'm making sure that the camera's staying focused, so if, if my eyes are switching back and forth. But, uh, sorry. But uh, back to topic. Basically, Saitama was up on the moon, came back down at such speeds that he pushed the ship that uh, Boros was on. Uh, and this ship is massive, by the way. Like, far, it's probably about the size of a small meteor. And tilted it just by landing on it and basically Boros used this massive energy wave massive energy wave that is an energy based attack and Saitama barely he he did one no, he calls it a serious punch which you know means Saitama's at barely no he's actually he was just joking basically he he threw basically a normal punch of his to match this very powerful beam and you could see the effect of each attack going either way when they collided. Saitama's punch split clouds all like almost entirely around the planet, whereas Boros only did for that one little section of the planet that they were on. Um, and that was just Saitama punching normally. He's been shown to shatter mountains with, with him just stopping to punch and not actually hitting anything. He would just hands down defeat defeat Goku and Superman. I have no doubt in my mind that Saitama could defeat Superman in a heartbeat. But uh, anyway, um, I think I'm going to end the video here. Thank you for listening to me ramble. Uh, like I said, the only reason this the only reason I started thinking about this is because I was watching YouTube videos and uh, reading some articles on like why people believe uh, Superman. And could defeat Goku and like I said I agree to a degree to a certain degree that if Superman did win it would be by the skin of his teeth not by the large margin that a lot of people would like to believe um and that's just my opinion if you have a different opinion you know and you want to say anything to me down in the comments feel free I am open up to I'm open for debate um but at the same time don't come on there and try to bash the things I say. Just come on there and have a polite discussion. Uh, again, guys, I do not have a schedule for when I make videos. For that, I do apologize. Uh, it, like I said, if I make videos, uh, I do it because I'm in the mood. If I make a video and I feel like I'm forced or I feel like I'm just doing it because I need to get a video out there, I do apologize. Um, you know, I also do have a job. I come home some days and I'm exhausted and I'd really rather not try to push out a forced video where I feel like I'm just pretending that I'm having fun. Uh, I know that some people don't have a job and that's the, that's what they want to do is sit there and make videos and that is their job, but I don't have that luxury at the moment and uh, probably never will, but I'm not on here to make money. So 
Uh, but again, guys, I do appreciate for those of you who still watch my videos, even though it's very few of you probably, I do appreciate the subscribers that I do have. I'm glad that over the last year I've gone up at least just five. Uh, that's fine with me. And uh, I appreciate those of you who go to my Facebook page and like my stuff, even though I haven't posted in forever. But uh, But I do appreciate all of your support. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, hopefully when I get to Idaho, I'm going to start learning how to animate and I'm going to try to get animated videos out. Uh, but that might, that's going to be a long time from now, uh, cause it's going to be mostly self-taught. But anyway, uh, thank you to all who watched this video and I'm waiting for now. Laters.